This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I used Squarespace to build both Basics with Babish and BingingWithBabish.com. On the sites, you'll find recipes, equipment lists, other news, and updates. All beautifully designed, if I do say so myself. Get 10% off your first Squarespace order by visiting squarespace.com slash babish. Hello there, welcome back to another episode of Anime with Alvin. Today, I'll be taking on the super hot and spicy burger from Boruto, a spiritual successor to Naruto. Although this burger seems to be loaded with only spice, I'm going to try to make this as delicious as possible. And when it comes to making a burger delicious, a big part of it is making your own ground beef. To start, I have three pounds of beautiful boneless short ribs here with lots of marbling and fat, and I'm just cutting these up into small chunks so that I can place them onto a tray lined with parchment paper and set to freeze for about 20 minutes until firm. While that hangs out in the freezer, I'm going to go ahead and start by making some burger buns. If you've been following this channel, we've done that many times before. In a bowl of a stand mixer, I'm adding in 500 grams of bread flour, 7 grams of instant dried yeast, 25 grams of granulated sugar, 10 grams of kosher salt, 100 grams of warm whole milk, 200 grams of warm water, and mixing that until it comes together into a dough. For a spice element, I'm adding in about 3 tablespoons of smoked paprika. This will both add a nice color and flavor to the buns without killing it with spice. When the dough is starting to look good, I'm adding in 85 grams of unsalted butter, which is cubed and also very soft, one bit at a time until the dough has absorbed all that goodness. This might take about 10 minutes of kneading or so, but the result should be a beautiful orange dyed dough that is sticky and soft to work with. This gets shaped into a large rotund nice ball and set to proof for about one to one and a half hours. While the dough rises, I'm going to work on a spicy ketchup. This seems to be the red sauce that glazes the burger in the video. So I'm going to go ahead and chop up one large jalapeno a large shallot, two to three cloves of garlic, and saute that in a saucepan with about two tablespoons of butter until fragrant. Once that's looking good, in goes about a quarter cup of chipotle Tabasco sauce, I like the smoky version, a tablespoon of honey, and about one and a half cups of ketchup. Once this has reduced and the sugars have started to caramelize a little bit, I'm going to use an immersion blender directly into the pot to puree all the goodness and create a nice smooth texture for a very savory and delicious ketchup that could pretty much go on anything, just not dessert. Now that it's been about 20 minutes and our beef is roughly 30 to 40% frozen through, the beef goes into a food processor and pulsed until they are small pebble-like sizes. Whoa, strong. I like to do these in batches because if you add them all at once, things can get stuck pretty easily. Personally, I like this method over using a meat grinder attachment because it's less to worry about and you could freeze your meat for a little longer than you need to and they'll still break down really easily. To make this a spicy patty, I decided to add in a tablespoon of cayenne pepper and two tablespoons of paprika, but not salt because that will be later. The beef is still pretty cold, so I'm gonna wait for it to soften a little bit before I make the patty. So we get time to work on our buns. Out goes our beautifully blue orange dough onto our surface, divided equally into four, and shaped and rolled into four beautiful burger buns. These go on a tray lined with parchment paper and left to proof for about another 30 minutes or so, just so that they can blossom again in size. Once they have ballooned, we are heating our oven to 350 degrees and baking our buns for about 30 to 35 minutes just until the dough is cooked through. We're gonna do a little bit of arts and crafts. What seems to sit on top of the burger is a red skull and crossbones dusted with a chili powder of some sort signify that this burger is in fact very deadly. So I went ahead, pulled up an image of skull and crossbones on my phone, and delicately traced out a little parchment paper stencil, so to speak. But ta-da, we have our stencil. The scariest part about this burger is that in the show, it seems to be laden with an entire mouthful of just straight up chilies as a condiment. And I was about to straight up throw on 20 bird's eye chilies on this burger, but Andrew came by and had the great idea of making them slightly pickled to lower their hotness, which is a fantastic move. We're gonna make a quick pickle brine with half a cup of white vinegar, two tablespoons of honey, and a pinch of salt. Get that to boiling, pour that over a hefty amount of our bird's eye chilies. Put some ice cubes in there to cool it down, and let that sit for about 30 minutes to an hour until they've been pickled. In the show, the burger seems to be on the thicker side, so I'm going for more of a pub style burger than a smash burger. These ended up being around five to six ounces or so, shaped into a disc like shape and seared into a hot stainless steel cast iron skillet over medium high heat with a little bit of vegetable oil. Both sides get seasoned with salt.
salt and cook for around five minutes total depending on the heat and fire of your pan. But a burger is also not a burger unless its buns are toasted. So once I've bisected one of these beautiful orange buns, wow, look at that. They get toasted for about five minutes on a low heat with a little bit of butter until golden brown. It is now time to assemble the burger. Bottom bun, our nice thick juicy patty cooked to a medium, a healthy spread of our smoky ketchup with jalapeno, shallot, and garlic. About 10 to 15 of our quick pickled bird's eye chilies sit right on top of our little bed of ketchup, a couple of leaves of dark, beautiful lettuce. In order to make this stencil adhere to the bun, I decided to go with a little bit of honey butter. Two tablespoons of butter to one tablespoon of honey melted until warm and sticky. And this beautiful mixture gets brushed lightly over the finished bun. To put this stencil to work, I'm applying that right in the middle of the top bun of a burger. And the whole thing gets a pretty healthy dusting of chili powder. Now it feels I'm playing Operation as I attempt to lift the parchment paper skull and crossbones off without disturbing the mountain of chili powder on top. This is why I could never be a doctor. If I saw this lying around or served at a party, I would probably stay away as I am a spice wuss and my mom hates me for it. But nevertheless, I present to you our version of the super hot and spicy burger from Boruto. All that's left is to take a bite and see how we did. Get a little cross section going here. Pretty good if I do say so myself. I definitely felt at least three to four bird's eye chilies entering my mouth as I bit through. But I have to say, even though this is very, very spicy, it is very delicious. The star of the show has to still be the patty though. You can't really go wrong with putting good beef into a burger bun. And even though this might be delicious with cheese, I don't think this kind of burger needs it. But what does Andrew think? Oh yeah, it looks like the spice is hitting him too. Okay. Uh, oh, he seems to like it as well. And well, I have to say between the two of us, I, we pretty much finished the whole thing, except the fact that we were reminded that there was a crew that we should probably let taste this. So we gave them the last like 5%. So I'm going to eat all those chilies we made. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's episode. They've been a great partner in supporting the Babish Culinary Universe and bringing my websites to life. From websites to online stores to domains and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for you to build your online presence. They also have SEO tools so that your site is getting found and searched by more people more often. If you want to try it for yourself, you can start your free trial today by visiting squarespace.com babish to get 10% off your first purchase.